I like I originally come from Bavaria in Germany and uh, I usually I have some small home resorts there that are like all really sweet tree skiing when there's snow but I lived in Innsbruck for a long time and the mountains here are much higher uh, and it's not far from home and nowadays I live in Zillertal there's a lot of different ski resorts here in the valley and a lot of good snow so just all of the valley I think is pretty much my home resort right now Right now, we're actually right, pretty big into like opening our new YouTube, which uh, we just like released our first videos. It's called SCU Venture, like SCU Venture, like adventure. And we're showing like um, with my best friend, you know, who's a skier. We're showing the people what we do, uh, bring the people onto the adventure. And one of the big projects that we're starting out with is uh, Skurari, a new movie project. It's basically like a uh, little bit funny about Dino and me uh, who are hijacking a Ferrari and go skiing. So it's definitely worth a watch. It's going to drop in December. Well, I think it's more of a question of like what inspired me to snowboard. And for sure, my sister was like always my idol when it comes to that because she was the only one in the family snowboarding. And she always took me everywhere. So it was kind of me always trying to be part of like the more adult people or the more older people like my sister who's 10 years older than me I think that was cool to like get away from maybe all the worries at home to be on the mountain with my sister and their friends and I felt super cool that was definitely like uh like my motivation to start snowboarding and since there wasn't so many terrain parks back in the day uh jumping would mainly be like on self-made jumps or like cliffs that were around and there were no parks so like all i did from the beginning was free ride yeah so i, I was competing for uh, like since i'm 15 in the juniors uh and then started with the qualifications and uh, i was like i think from the beginning i had the points to go to the four stars and it was working pretty good every year i could see like i was progressing towards the top of the seating list and then there was like three years where i got either second or third and only the first of the qualification moves up to the tour. It's definitely a bit frustrating third year in a row to like just one or two steps underneath, underneath the cut to step up. And then the next year I was feeling super ready. And then the preseason in November, I overshot like the pro line and Stubai and broke my hip. So I was out for that season too. And that taught me some resilience and how to come back stronger and uh, really start training. Uh, in a different way where I had to like come back from something and actually build up my body before that was always a bit like still youth unbreakable and then I was like damn I need to like work on this and I think that's like a challenge that for me in the end was very valuable life lesson. Well at the start for sure when I was uh, I think I started when I was like three and then like got into it more until I did skiing and snowboarding until I was like 15. And then when I started competing, I was like, yeah, I can only snowboard. And then there's so many like pro riders around here that they all have like crazy style and very nice personalities and they'll teach you some tricks around here. So there's like Gigi and Flo Ole. They've definitely been my idols in terms of professional snowboarding. I think most people don't know much about me, to be honest. So I guess <laughs> most of it. So I do work together with a um, professional free runner who has like a, who's a coach as well and close to Innsbruck, it's called Lucas, and he uh, like teaches me a lot of air elements and also a lot of like just strength and mobility, fastness. We do a lot of like just workouts together in his gym, which has trampolines and everything, which is awesome. And then also I do quite some like practice on the mountain, like I do paragliding, I can fly, just try to stay fit. And mentally, uh, for sure, it helps when you go filming, I would say, because of the film situation where you have only like one line and you have a lot of crew, like build up to it and you need to plan your line. It's kind of like doing a competition. So I think for me, that kind of sets the tone of how ready I feel when I film. This also kind of reflects how ready I feel. <laughs> He's only like a. Uh, my physical coach, like, uh, he's a free runner, he's not a snowboarder. So he, like, trains with me and works out with me and makes me ready for the season. Also, and, like, on the trampolines. But when it comes to snow, 
like a typical off season train day would probably include um like stretching in the morning doing some mobility probably go out for like a run or like a hike and fly maybe with a paraglider and then in the afternoon do some workout like for strength or for fastness um and if i could squeeze maybe like a sauna in the end that that would be perfect train day or in the off, off season so i've done a lot of different courses and i'm also a certified prayer instructor so I also go out with kids so it's very important that i know everything about safety and try to like stay fit with it everything that there is online as well and meetings that you can attend every year to just practice that it's very important but also like the team that you go in with a lot of the risk is also like hidden in, within the small steps like communication or knowing what the other one is up to so like um practicing together real scenarios and also keep talking about every risk that you see especially in the beginning of the season will make you more sure again that you one of, one of the most valuable things i've learned in competing 10 years now in freeride is that you have to point for 90 percent of your capability when you're looking at the line that you're planning you should think that when you will do that you should probably feel good about it and confident about it and have like 10 percent because you know there's going to be things that you didn't expect it's going to be a bit different so you need a little bit of extra buffer at the top to react to those situations and whenever you go over 100 percent, it's very likely you're going to fall and maybe there's a miracle where you can pull up like something that you usually couldn't do before but yeah it, it helps for sure to just think about what can i actually do what is my level and what will be like easy or like not easy what will be probable that i can pull it off yeah so we spend a lot of time looking at the mountains not really riding them just like trying to figure out where to go down and it has a lot of different it helps a lot to have like different angles I try to like look at it from every different angle that we can get also with the drones nowadays it's a bit easier to have this top angle where you can see better the distance in between the features where to break and not so that is like a big part is just looking at it and seeing different options but I found out funny enough that usually I look at the mountain and I'm like yeah I think I'm gonna go take this line and then I look at every other line that's possible and I come back to the first one and I'm like yeah I think that's good yeah I think like going filming is probably preparation for doing competition since you're trying to like not stop in the middle of it and you usually have like only one try so I don't like my Dino says this, my best friend says this about me is I think he says that I can like I'm, what I said just about now with the strategies that I'm pretty good at knowing what what is possible for certain people like I think I can look at you and see you write maybe one or two lines and I'm pretty sure I know like the maximum I can take you down with like the maximum difficulty I can maybe have someone do it or like if I give someone advice on the line I'm usually pretty good at knowing what the person can actually do then and what is a good for, idea for other people also for myself but I think that's good for other people as well that they can rely on me when they're on the microphone or like on the walkie-talkie and they're not sure exactly where to go I'm pretty good at describing it and telling them what's a good idea for them maybe yeah I'm also a coach uh, free ride so I think I guess that's up as well so I think the best way to deal with the pressure is what I did last year as well is just um, think about every competition as a not just a competition but also as a vacation trip uh, where you can have a good time and enjoy it uh, nevertheless of the two minutes that you go down there and if they're going to be successful or not is usually very subjective even if you make a good run in other people's eyes maybe you don't feel good about it or it can be so many things so what i did is just i took my best friends to every competition they were very keen on coming and joining and supporting we had a good time and i think my my stoke on free ride was always there and reflected in the way i was riding yeah for sure i mean i think also going coming to the tour 
it didn't change much to me since I was competing for such a long time already before. And I would say getting onto the tour is probably just as hard as staying on the tour. So the pressure didn't amplify. Well, I think what I said already before, I'm a big spa lover, I like, love to go to the sauna. Nah, big all for it. I love to hang out just with friends or go out in nature and have like a just a walk into the beautiful mountains here. That's usually quite chill, it makes you relax. It's good for your body. It's fun. I'm I'm really big into music. I love I love I love uh, hip hop. I love old school. Uh, for sure, I'm very big into the nature. So I'm also part of Protect the Winters, and it's quite like. Uh, big topic for me to talk about this also since we all need the snow and we all want to have a nice world in the future that we don't forget about that. Well, besides all the necessary gear that you need to bring which is already enough to think about. Um, don't really have like a talisman or something like that. I did buy a Disney watch in Kicking House last season which is lighting up when you when you press it. I have worn it to every competition since. Maybe I'll continue that, maybe not. Let's see. It's quite nice. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I think um, coming through a world champion, that's my goal. Let's see if it works. I'm not, I'm not fast if it doesn't work. Uh, happy if I can stay on the tour for another year. Let's see. But for sure, what I want to do is become a, a snowboard guy, a certified snowboard guide. Also, next to that. So, um, very keen on that and I'm also loving the coach job with kids so maybe I'll transition into that sooner or later but for now I like the way it is I'm just getting started I think you'll see much more I think I want to keep the secret so so the, uh, the surprise will be better and there's a bit about what he's gonna do and then not doing it <laughs> yeah I mean I see that there is a change, obviously, also with the Freer World Tour and what you guys are doing and what your goals are. I see also that the Freeride Academy that we founded in Innsbruck and other clubs and coaches and like, people and kids are more excited about Freeride than ever. And a lot of different locations like Georgia and Spain coming up where I was super surprised that this is such a big thing. Uh, it makes me super happy that we all have this common interest and vibe and I hope we can make something good about it which is helpful for every rider and also for everyone like rider who's not a professional. For sure getting onto the tour was my proudest moment because I was trying to do that for such a long time and it was kind of like a childhood dream for me to just ride on the tour so just that year last year was for me like okay I did it like I don't really have to worry anymore if I make no. <laughs> it didn't really work like that but it was the idea. Patient, that's for sure. Like you gotta be patient and uh, don't try to take shortcuts. You probably end up in the hospital. Yeah, I think that would be the same advice that uh, I would give to people who, who want to do free riding, also in competitions. Staying in one piece, not hurting yourself, uh, will go much longer way than trying to be the sickest rider on the day. It's all about staying. Well, for sure, we I think we can all see that snow's not there anymore, the way it used to be at least, and it's becoming more extreme, which doesn't help for the avalanche danger. Like just without any bullshit, that's it for me, for us. Like for us, it's becoming more dangerous and it's becoming harder to do, and it's becoming also more expensive, which probably is also connected to the environment in a way. Yeah, I think we have kind of like a beautiful thing there that keeps us motivated, that keeps us connected to the nature, which makes us appreciate it and also fight for it. And we can like all like share the nature with more people who are maybe just growing up or younger, then I think they'll have a much better understanding about the issues and they'll have more a better intuition about how to handle these issues. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's um, something that's changing as well. It's not something that always means the same for me. I think uh, different stages of my life means different things for, for me. Um, it comes from like just pure passion and love for it to now it's becoming a job, which definitely changing a bit the trajectory on it and also the way I have to deal with it. So 
yeah i don't think that is a thing like uh, the brewer community is so national and uh, i've been writing with so many different people from all around the world i think that my influence is uh, not really dominated by any cultural specifics or the where where i come from or the mountains i think it's quite a wild mix and i think If I can say something good about my writing, which is always hard, honestly, like I usually like to not say that, but I, I think what what's maybe my best strength on the tour also compared to others is that I like do everything quite well. Maybe I'm not the, like a big specialist in one thing, but I think I have like quite well rounded. I think that's what free writing is also about. Yeah, I think let's keep the love for free writing real. Um, we all love to hate sometimes. I love to hate sometimes on everything and all decisions that are maybe being made around here. But um, in the end, I think it's cool if we can come together and make uh, make this sport a party.